there in the headscarf. As a social scientist, we sort of the model of the rational actor is somewhat discredited. We don't look at all actors at all times as acting rationally. In fact, we assume that they don't. Um, but that was the prelude to my question. My question was really, would you accept that it's not so much religion that causes conflict, but sincere com commitment to some belief that you think is morally important? And in that sense, do we get rid of morality? Well, I think I partly said that when I said that in the great wars of the, of the 20th century, um, these were driven by um, non-religious uh, motivations, but they were driven by my country right or wrong kind of patriotism. Um, that's a little bit different from morality we're talking about, but at least it's, it's not religious. I was interested in what you said you, in your preamble when you said that, in the, I take it you're a social scientist, and, and you're, you're no doubt right to suggest that since social scientists are studying the human animal, um, you notice that people actually don't behave rationally. Well, unfortunately, that's true. Um, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't behave rationally just because people don't. Uh, let's take a question from an atheist or an agnostic. Uh, gentleman there in the black jacket there, three rows down in the middle. I think it, when, I, when I read your book, which I thought also was excellent, it became very apparent to me that uh, evolution, nature has given the human species some very, very powerful survival instincts. We're aggressive, men want to spread their genes, we want to gather as much resources together as we can to, to uh, help our genes uh, continue and survive. And as a result of that, there's been a lot of very, very dark episodes in our history. The Roman Empire, which was terribly oppressive, hedonistic, the Vikings who stole, raped, pillaged, the Persians, so on and so forth. Do you not think that it was actually the ideas of religion that took human, the human race, the human species, from beyond these base survival instincts and started to give them a new paradigm okay. for thinking, which was not necessarily in the interests of their, 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 the, uh, the instincts that they have for survival? It's perfectly true that a, that a, a sort of um, selfish gene view of uh, life, which is what I've mostly, mostly written about, is a very unpleasant view of life, and, and if, if you followed the, the creed of the selfish gene literally and actually lived your life according to it, it would be a very unpleasant world in which to live. It would be um, a sort of Thatcherite um, <laughs> uh, work. Um, I mean, I've, I've, I've often said that while I'm a passionate Darwinian when it comes to explaining the way life is. I'm a passionate anti-Darwinian when it comes to um, organising our, our, our lives. Would the, would the world be a better place if religion disappeared tomorrow? Uh, yes. Uh, it's about all the good things we discussed yeah. that you recognise. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you'd still have the Nazi Holocaust, the communism, you wouldn't have the charities, that's fine. But, I, you would have the charities, but, but um, I mean, it, it's only your assumption. But I want to finish because, because the, the question actually challenged me by saying that it was religion that helped us to escape from the unpleasantness of the, of the selfish gene. Um, I don't actually think that is true. Um, I think that um, we have escaped by a long and slow process of civilization in which religion no doubt played a part. If you look historically over the very long time span of, of history, we're getting better, we're getting nicer, we're getting more charitable, uh, we're getting kinder, getting less cruel. I, I wouldn't give religion the credit for that. I think I would give a much more complicated mixture of civilizing processes uh, the, the, the credit for it. And religion is probably a part of that.